Choi. What's up, everybody? All right, so welcome back to The Choice. Back with Eddie Thomas, again, voice of reason. And, uh, of course, you can follow him on Pure.Defiance on Instagram and TikTok. My name is Rick. Everything is a choice. Uh, check us out on justamileaday.com or look up Everything is a Choice. You can find a lot of stuff on what we've done. And today, I think we're going to have just uh, – I think the goal is a, a breath of fresh air. We're going to kind of go through some history and – and just be thankful. Like, I think we're going to have a lot of gratitude and thankfulness of things that, that we're thankful this could never happen to us. Like, we've seen the past, we've seen what's happened, and we're thankful things like this will not be a part of our life. And so I shared some stuff with Eddie, and, and, and him and I can kind of go through some of these. And, and let's just be thankful. Be thankful for the stuff that there is. Let's, um, let's just do a screen share and uh, see what we can do here. Let's try it out. What do you think? <clears throat> All right. I'm going to go through some stuff here that has happened in the past, uh, happened in, in Germany, and it's happened in places that we learned valuable lessons in psychology. And we're very thankful that ideologies like this and things like this can never happen to us. So let's just be on the side of thankfulness of our, of our leadership, thankfulness to the things that happened um, around us for our safety and our security and our freedom and our protection, and that these things can never happen to us. <clears throat> Sounds good to me. Sounds good. Let's do a screen share. So if you're not watching and you're listening, we'll do a screen share here, and, and let's see how this goes. Let's see. Is this the one I want? Okay. So <clears throat> first off, um, I was writing about one thing, like just how thankful that like the programming of humanity that can't happen to us because we've already seen it before in Germany. And uh, I just want to go through like some of the stuff that happened during that history lesson, just some of the things and, and just, I guess, give praise and give thanks for things that could never happen in our time. So I guess I'm going to start off with just the way that some of these dynamics would work, especially when like, you know, any regime or anything was ever going to try to create uh, some system of control and just be thankful that we as educated and informed and connected and, and spiritually awake and all of these positive things that we are as a society um, are so far beyond these methods of being manipulated or being uh, caught in some kind of control that's already happened before. So thankful. So I think the one thing that was interesting, especially then is they learned about methods of enforcement. This is generally to create a consequence. Uh, I'm sure you've seen this, uh, anything from uh, just saying like police terror or the police are going to get you um, indoctrination. There's definitely going to have to be some sort of censorship where authorities will say what is acceptable or not acceptable. Uh, there'll be persecution against anybody. So there'll be some sort of consequence is generally the method of enforcement. There'll be a consequence for not going along with it. And the, the asks or the, the needs that have to happen from you know, being compliant with our methods of enforcement. It's just making small sacrifices and are just moralistic just judgment, you know, um, sacrifice, you know, uh, wear, like just wear a mask or just keep some distance from people. Uh, stay away from friends or family or loved ones. Keep away. Uh, take your kids, keep them out of school, keep them away from their friends and don't let them sit together at lunch. You know, small sacrifices. Things like showing an ID, identify yourself, you know, make it so we can see like, you know, you're, you're one of us or you're not, we just need to make sure everybody's safe. And if you don't, uh, you'll be fired or you'll be, you know, punished or censored or you'll go to jail or you'll have a fine, you know, something that's obviously reasonable. And uh, if you don't fall in line, you're definitely going to be in trouble in some way or shape or form, but it's for safety everyone it's for protection and it's for the greater good of everyone and eddie who, who's against that right i mean if you put it that way i'm shit, that sounds beautiful you don't want do you not want safety and security and protection and the well, greater I mean, good if if i didn't then i would just be a selfish asshole so i mean obviously i can't i can't go against that mentality thank you thankfully 
thankfully we're not in any position to have to be in that choice, but obviously you can't go against that (laughs) obviously because it's they said it's for safety. So we have to do that. And it makes sense. Of course. Yeah, think, think of the children. Of co- well, yeah. Of co- <sighs> There's no argument. No argument, of course. All right, next up, they'll use modern technology. This is where they're going to use the, the systems in place that they can use for this time. This would be mass communication to spread propaganda, um, generally probably through news sources, uh, a lot of media stuff, a lot of noise. Um, there'd be advanced military weapons or new uh, you know, manipulation devices that'll be uh, sent out. There will be uh, social media control. Uh, People will do self-censoring or they'll be censoring um, to make it so that it stays in line with whatever the the message is. There will be acceptance of wrongful and invasive terms and conditions. And this is just so people can use certain apps or use certain um, convenient methods of whatever their pleasures would be or whatever they would want, whether it be uh, through social medias or through, you know, a game app or whatever, whatever invasive, uh, I guess, sacrifices to your freedoms, completely for safety, of course. And I think that uh, we're, that's something that if, if these things started to happen, I, I'm, I'm thankful for us as humans, like, when we're too advanced to kind of fall for this stuff. And so if there was like, you know, any propaganda on the news or any manipulation or people putting things up that weren't true, I feel grateful, you know, as a, as a society that we would be like, we'd catch on quick. I think that we would, as as a people. Absolutely. I mean, we have, we have all this history to fall back on all this, all this knowledge at our fingertips. Like, I mean, you fool me once, can't be fooled again. Yeah. Shame on me. Right. Next one never happened. So that like, let's just, let's just all be grateful there. I'm grateful that anybody who's listening to this way ahead of the curve could never ever fall for any kind of propaganda or one-sided information or any type of manipulation to the information because we all know, and let's just be real. These things can't be messed with. It's truth only. And it is not subjective. There is no real opinion when it comes to truth. It is only truth. And I think that we would, we would see through a subjective opinion very quickly. Like, and we'd nip that in the butt. So thankful for us on that one. That's, that's not really a concern for us. State of control and society. So this is where you'd have to identify yourself and you can't go do certain things. You can't go to uh, certain businesses. You can't do certain jobs. You can't go certain distances. You shouldn't, um, gather at places you shouldn't uh, like school or church church would be shut down we can't have church uh, for safety because there's obviously there would be dangers um, yes. you can't have art or personal life no personal life no fitness life no goals you have to you have to get rid of anything to improve uh, youth groups gone uh, you can't do that because we need the kids to be separated and isolated and not be able to communicate with each other um, if they, they do not congregate with, um, they're not allowed to congregate with healthy thinkers or hope because there's way too much danger out there to consider to be doing those actions. Um, generally, whenever that happened in, in Germany and things like that, that was a lot of smoke and mirrors, a lot of propaganda stuff that was pushed to make it so that uh, being able to connect with people who were like, hey, that, that's not true. There, you can't, you just can't allow things like that to happen. You can't allow people to tell the truth or experts to be able to say like, Hey, pay attention. This is not right. Those things need to be stopped quickly. And so I think that as a society, we would recognize if any, um, any experts or any doctors or anybody who was very highly decorated or published or, peer reviewed, any of that stuff, if any of that was getting canceled or getting shut down or closed off or kicked off of major platforms, I think we as intelligent people would quickly catch on and go, Hey, there's a red flag there. You know, we're canceling experts. And I I think that that would be um, noticeable for us as people that if 
some of these things that were said, like, don't go to church, don't go to school, don't hang out with your friends, don't go to certain restaurants, don't go and do a personal life. Um, that would be a red flag for us. And I'm, I'm pretty grateful as, as us, as civilized people, we wouldn't, we wouldn't fall for it. I think that that's pretty great. I'm, I'm happy that we're all at that level, you know, of education and awareness. It's really it. I think I'm probably most thankful for sarcasm. What do you mean? I just, it's a dying art. And I, I just, uh, I really do appreciate it. Have you been practicing? A little bit here and there. Hmm. But I, I love to observe it more than anything. Like, you'll, have to, you'll have to show me later what that's like. <clears throat> all right. I'll see what I can do. Yes. All right. So now we have all these problems. I mean, let's be real. This is problem and problem and problem. All these problems would come up. And in order for um, there to be a, a cure or some sort of safety or there has to be some sort of symbol, there's a dynamic leader or somebody who shows up to save the day. Um, this person will be talking about uniting people. Uh, they will symbolize the government and uh, they will encourage popular support through force of will. Like we're going to make it so everybody is good and you follow me and you'll be safe. They will have the solutions to all of your problems if you just follow them. Um, thankfully, <clears throat> we have enough research and stuff that if somebody tried to pull one of these scams on us or something like this, and say that there's only one cure, it doesn't matter which version of it that you choose, there's only one cure that fixes all our problems and it's not preventative and it's not us working together. It is only this one cure, that's it. I think that we would go, that doesn't make any sense, that's not how problems work. I don't think anybody would ever fall for like, you know, you can do anything that any, any one of these options, it doesn't matter. As long as it's one of the options that we give you, I think people would probably catch on that. We've seen that before and wouldn't fall for it. So I'm pretty thankful that like, if that ever showed up and somebody who seemed to be like, I have all the answers, we would just ask more questions, right? I mean, I would, I would think so. At least sit down for like one last supper. Yeah, at least <laughs> one last supper. And so next would come some sort of ideologies. Um, this is going to be like the, the set goals of the state, uh, glorifies aims of the state. So it makes it so that if you are doing this, it's awesome. It's, this is what you do. It's great. And then anything that would be completely contradictory to just humanity itself would be completely justified. And so if anything was ever happening to make it so that people were ostracized or they were kicked out or they were hurt or they were imprisoned or if they were killed or anything happened totally justified because it's it's for the goals or the, or the best of, of the people and if there's any collateral damage that happens this is going to be completely justified as like part of the process you know can't make an omelet right so you have to fight anybody who um who wants to stop you from having the solution to all your problems. If anybody is doing something that's not aligning with the dynamic leader's solution to all your problems, that means that they don't want you to be happy. They don't want you to be safe and they don't want you to be secure. And they're not worried about protection of the greater good or the, the civil obligations that you have to my happiness and the cure to all my problems. And I'm very grateful that we would catch that so quickly. <laughs> we feel like that's not true. Uh, this seems made up because there's no such thing as a solution to all my problems that if you don't do it too, then I'll have more problems. No, I mean, at this stage, we're, we're too smart, way too woke. It yeah. could never happen. So that's, that's good news. Thankfully. Could you imagine? <laughs> oh, my God. So thankful that's not even one of the things we have to worry about. I don't even know how I would deal in a society like that. I would like people that used to live that way. If, I'm yeah, sure they uh, had a whole lot going on that just seemed like everything was just they had to be kind of on, dumb on the all, positive. Right? Like you, you think back then, like you thought, like they said that the German society was definitely democratic and and advanced and intelligent, but I guess not. Right? They fell right for it. 
<laughs> dummies. I'm glad that we learned from that, though. Next, state control of individuals. This is going to demand loyalty. Deny basic liberties. Expect personal sacrifice for the good of the state. Sacrifice your freedom to us, and we will keep you safe and secure in our prisons or our restrictions. And obviously, they used the trigger words, safe and secure. They'll keep you in your own prisons or they'll keep you in your own restricted allowments. You're only allowed to go out at certain times. You can only go to certain places. You can only congregate at certain uh, with certain people. And they will demand your loyalty. Now, the one thing that's important about this is that during this time, um, the civilization itself, and this is where, you know, in Germany, they didn't, they didn't take any inventory on this, that the people who are demanding loyalty or, or denying the basic liberties or expecting you to sacrifice for the good of the state didn't count that there's a substantial amount of more people than the people who are making the demands. Now, if Germany would have caught on and went like, wait a second, there's way more of us than you. You can't make us do this totally different story. And they probably wouldn't have been hypnotized by the idea of these ideologies and got wrapped up into genocidal mindsets. So, well, I mean, clearly that, that, that definitely would have worked, but there was a whole bunch of division back then and no, no one could really see eye to eye. Everyone was separated. So like, how could there be unity inside of something like that for everyone to get together and, and utilize their power of numbers? Yeah, no, I mean, it's that's that was a definitely a big flaw on their part is they definitely forgot that they were all people and they were all in it together and everybody was just trying to look out for themselves um instead of remembering that everybody's trying to take care of their family and friends and themselves they were all together but like again thankfully we don't have like any polarization that way because that would be that would be obviously a recipe for disaster if we fell for it. So <laughs> no, I'm I'm very happy that our our society today realizes everyone's on the same team, and there's there's yeah. no there's no controversy or split decisions on on what our main objective for for life is. Yeah, definitely. Like I, I think that I, one thing that I, I've noticed the most is if we were going to be um, glorifying the most important race that we have, it would be human because we're all the yeah. human race and that's the only one that matters as we look out for each other. And I'm very grateful that we've all come to that conclusion. And there's no, there's no polarization on any aspect of it. Left, right, blue, nah. red, uh, facts, not facts. All this, so everybody's on the same page and I feel very lucky and grateful. We don't have any of that stuff going on to make us an us or them thing. So, all right, next up uh, dictatorship and one, party rule. This means the, the government will then exercise an absolute authority, uh, dominates the government. And that means they can do anything without consequence because they are the rule. They are the boss of everything. This means no matter what they do to anybody, whether it be rape or murder or experiment on people, torture, public executions, mass genocide, there's no recourse. There's no, they are the final say. They are the power and they are the authority and there's they would be the one who punished themselves and so since they were the ones like you know like in this case it was hitler in this case or uh, stalin like whoever it was who was in power if they did something that was moralistically wrong then they would obviously punish themselves right they would be like that was wrong i should make me in trouble and if anything like this was starting to happen where people just kind of say like, hey, listen, they're the one in charge. So what can you do? I don't think that we would fall for something like that today because we've seen it happen before. So I'm grateful. No, obviously. I mean, if if we trust them to to make us safe, they we should obviously trust them to know that they would do the right thing if if they had crossed the line that they shouldn't have. So self regulation. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm I'm happy I'm ha I'm happy we have I have the sensibility to be able to realize that 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 is facts and cannot be swayed made it so yeah man we're doing awesome as humans we're doing great um this was something that was also uh, a part of what happened during that time and it was they learned just through psychology and thankfully a lot of us have this education already so for most of us this is just a, a revisiting or just a a, a recap 
if you will. This is just a recap. And this was like the 10 stages of genocide. How did that happen in Germany? How did it get to the point where like such a one-sided ideology became an entire country? How did it happen? And so I'll just kind of burn through some of these real quick. And again, I'm just grateful that like we've learned so much. And again, from I really have to really hammer this down. It's a recap. So I understand for most of you, you've already learned this before. So first off comes with classification. They had to divide us into an us and them mentality. You're either one of us or you're one of them. And there's definitely a lot to being able to keep polarized or separated that we're not together, we're versus. And thankfully you haven't seen it. Have you even encountered anything like this? No, nah, not in my life. Yeah, so lesson learned. We're crushing yeah. it there. Good job, everybody. Solid 100. Solid 100. Next up, symbolization. Now, this is where people are forced to identify themselves. Uh, it's pretty important that whenever we're going to try to separate or get um, get it to where we can have that us and them really, really hit home, what they had to do was make it so people had to show that they were the enemy. You have to declare yourself the enemy and we need you to volunteer that information so we know who to attack. And so if you go to work and they say, hey, we just want to take inventory on, you know, who's doing one thing or the other, who has this criteria matter, who doesn't have it yet. It's really just for people's safety. Um, you know, it, it's just to make sure everybody's good. It's not to have people force identify. And I think if anything like that was to happen today, <laughs> I, it would be like the first day that would get caught, you know, because we've already seen this before. So it's very apparent. So yeah, that, that wouldn't slip through the cracks or, or uh, be altered in any type of way for us to go. This is acceptable. Thank you. Yeah. I feel like a weight was taken off of my chest. Just like, just knowing how well we would catch that if that happened. Next up is discrimination as people f begin to face systemic discrimination. So like, if you don't have, I don't know, let's just say the special ID, let's just call it that just to keep it. So it's like, I think back then, like the swastika or whatever. What if you don't have your special ID, um, you can't go to places. So like, you can't eat at this restaurant, or you can't um, go to this this gym, or you can't go and do these things because you don't have the special ID. Um, and it has to be updated, and it has to be current. You have to have the special ID, and if you don't, you're not allowed to do basic human freedoms. Um, I can't even imagine something like this ever really getting pulled off today. I mean, after all the stuff we went through with um, like not even with just racism and all the stuff, we women's rights and with the discrimination stuff that's been happening over and over again throughout history, I would find that if we tried to start a new systemic discrimination that we would Dude, we've seen it a hundred times. We know what that is. We're not going to make that mistake again, right? No, I mean, you, obviously, you, like I said before, you fool me once, you can't fool me again. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. Well done. Next up would be dehumanization. And this is where people are equated with animals or vermin or a disease. Kind of like, uh, you know, um, you hear the stories with like Jesus curing the lepers. Like if you knew what a leper was, there was, you'd stay the hell away from me, you evil disease. Or if someone's got the plague, like uh, Argentine plague and things like this, people were fleeing the city. Stay away from me. You're, you're monsters. You're not human anymore. And we should kill all of you. You don't deserve health care. You don't deserve to be treated as a human being because you're an animal or you're vermin or a disease or less than an animal realistically, because people would have more empathy for dogs or some cats than they would for some of these people who are just not the same as them. And so that's why, that's why it's pretty, it's pretty awesome for us that we've gotten to see what happened in Germany when there was a dehumanization of the Jews and we would, we would not do that. We would, these are people, we're people, they're people. And we have more empathy now, I think, as humans, as a society, because we're more connected and like through our technology and our phones and 
uh, even like we can zoom call like so it's better it's better yeah has I'm, I I actually don't have anything else for that. You nailed it. We'll never do that. We'll never we'll never make it so like we can. Uh, I think the, one of the terms that would happen was if some people would die, and it wasn't you. Well, it's acceptable. You know that's part of part of making the omelet, man. Part of you got hey, some of them they're not going to make it because they don't deserve to. So I'm glad we yeah, didn't clearly do that. clearly it was their time to go. <laughs> They were, they were a problem anyways. Organization. This is where the government creates specific groups, whether it's like special police or special military to enforce the policies. This gets back to what we just talked about when it gets into the consequence aspect. So we're going to call special police to come and handle it. Uh, you'll see people when they say people shouldn't be allowed to do things. Well, who do you call to enforce that they're not allowed or they should be kicked out or they should be... Um, you know, thrown out of the organization. Could be. I mean, I think that at this point, at this point, we might as well just say Ghostbusters because of how unrealistic it would be um, to have anything like that ever happen because we've seen it before. We know that that shouldn't be a thing that ever should happen to a free society. So Ghostbusters is appropriate. The Ghostbusters, that's who would call. That's funny, man. <laughs> And then next up will be polarization. That's where the government broadcasts propaganda to turn the populace against the group. Now, this is the part where it starts getting a little more interesting because the government will keep reinforcing that your hate is justified. Hatred is good. And that's what would start to happen to say if those people, them, they're bad, they're bad, they're bad, they're bad. Don't put up with it. Don't be around it. It's not good. You need to You need to stand up for safety. You need to stand up for what is right. You need to stand up for justice. You need to stand up for equality. You need to stand up for your family. You need to stand up against these bad, 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 bad monsters. That's where the propaganda started coming in, and, and oh, it's so obvious now. I mean, you look back at those old Nazi videos, and you'd be like, I'd never fall for that old trick. <laughs> so grateful that we've all seen that, and again, this recap is happening so that we don't do that again. So, Yeah, just don't look up. Stand up, just don't look up. Don't look up. Keep your, keep your head down and keep working. One step after the other, right? Preparation official action to remove or relocate. And this would be more when they start doing their own red line distri districts. Remember how great that was, where you uh, isolate and you alienate that group. We have to take them out of society because we've already established they're less than monsters. These are like rats. These are human diseases that are walking around and we're civilized. We can't have that. So, if anything like that happened and they tried to, you know, kick people into just one area or try and say all of the people who are this way or don't have their badges or don't have their IDs, they would go here. And the people who do, they get to sit in this section, but people who don't, they get to sit in this section um, and any kind of like, you know, identification to relocate or remove people from the good people and make the bad people have to sit over there. Um, <laughs> that would be so great. I can't even imagine like people like not catching on to that. You know, if there was like that type of like obvious uh, division or separation where like they would say people who have their ID can sit here, but anyone without ID can't sit near them. That would, that would be crazy. It'd be crazy. I can't even fathom a world like that. Yeah. So thankfully we'd catch that. We would catch it. And that's what happened in Germany, though, and that's when all of this stuff started happening is after all the demonizing and the dehumanization of what happened, they got into the persecution. This is where, because of the area now being isolated, if anybody was to commit murder or go in there and steal their property, um, if they would go in there and they would have trial massacres or they would have what? would then turn into justified crimes against the group. This would mean that if you went against these 
you know, monsters or these diseases or this vermin, and you hurt them or you took their things or you did bad things to them, well, the special police or the special government in this case was like, that's against the monsters. We're not going to punish you for that. There's no consequence for hurting those people. And I think that if you start trying to remove rights, uh, remove freedoms, um, say that they shouldn't have health care, they shouldn't be taken care of, they deserve to die, the world will be better off without them. Um, I can do what I want to them and not have to worry about recourse. Um, I think that we would, we would prevail very quickly as a society. I think that we would all recognize this very juvenile maneuver, this obviously moralistic wrong goes against the golden rule itself of treat others the way you'd like to be treated or love thy neighbor as you love yourself. And I think that we would, we would cling to kind of the more obvious ways of treating each other the way we like to be treated instead of, you know, because I put it, you don't have your ID on you, I can hurt you or take your things or kill you. And that's okay because you're not human and we wouldn't fall into that. No, I mean, in, in just worst case scenario, even if we did, we can always fall back on the original statement of our, our that government would protect us. So, I mean, obviously they're going to keep us safe. So even if we did for whatever reason, overlook that one, we got, we still have a fail safe. That, that safety net is so strong. So thankfully we have, the right people in office and the right people for the job to be able to just really like keep us from going this direction. And I know, I know that if there was any information like uh, to keep us safe, they would, it would be like the first thing shared. It'd be like, did you know that we figured out preventative and healthy and safe ways to keep you and your family safe? Um, and it would be, obviously proven to be safe and that's one thing i'm very thankful for the government regulations like fda and things like this that if anything came to the point where this is going to start doing harm they wouldn't cover it up <laughs> you know they would they would they would show it right away there wouldn't be any censorship from our leadership now and and that's why i'm very grateful that we've all learned from seeing those patterns before so lucky us yeah, good news. Good good time to be alive. I, I I'm really proud of the the gains we've made. Yeah, humans. We're good. We're doing awesome, you know. Next up is the extermination phase. This is the wholesale elimination of the group. Uh, this is extermination. It's not murder because they're not considered human, which makes it completely justified by following orders and policy. When they talked yeah. to the people who work in these concentration camps and they ask them like, how were you even capable of doing this level of crime to another person? And they used a word called Amtsfraken. And that meant like office speak. And that meant it was following orders. I was policy. I didn't have a choice. I was just doing my job. Just doing, Hey, listen, I, what am I going to do? Fight the, fight the government here. I mean, I got to do my job, you know, and if that means I have to kill a thousand people today, or should I say not people, but disease vermin today, so be it. You know, that's yeah. part of my policy or part of the job. I'm just following orders. It's not me. And, and that's my justification that if I do something cruel, I'm just following orders. And yeah, I mean, it was, it was for the greater good anyway. So obviously there's no downside to that. Safety, security, man. Safety and security. We would, we would, we would know the difference. That's the, if you are going to just start murdering or, uh, I guess, judging who lives and who dies based on your fears and your judgments and um, what you're told is going to be, it needs to be done and not really think for yourself. Uh, that would be a recipe for disaster, which is what happened. And again, I'm, I'm just glad that we can recap and go, all right, that's not going to happen to me again. Fool me once. I liked it. And then next up after that, when there are people who are all just killing other people, uh, gets into the denial. The government denies that they had committed any crime. They had nothing to do with it because who was really carrying out the, the consequences? 
It was the mob. It was the it was the it was the people. The they listen. They were just trying to keep everybody safe and secure. And these vermin and these these people who spread disease, those people needed to be taken care of. But we 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 weren't going to stop anybody. We weren't even a part of it. We 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 saw it all happening, and we're like, wow, this is this is crazy. And I know that right now. Um our government would be so far ahead of if anybody was to start doing crimes against humanity, that our government would be so far ahead of that to make sure like America stays straight and, and, and strong and united and uh, very grateful, very grateful for that. So we're lucky, man. We really are. I think that we're, we're in a blessed time. And I think uh, people listening to this can definitely, there's no argument, very blessed times. And uh, yeah, definitely. Like that's a lot of information there that I know you've already probably known. This is like going back to 10th grade. You know, we all did this one before, but what are some of your thoughts, Eddie? I know that you're, you're listening to me kind of go in. I'd like to, you know, are you excited? You like this? You're happy? Like what's going on with you? No, I'm, I'm super excited for, honestly, I think we should have done this for, uh, for Thanksgiving special, but um you know, now that we're here, we're, we're bringing it all up and it's, it's really bringing it to perspective, like just, just how much things have changed. And it's, it's crazy to think how people used to live and never in, never in my lifetime would I ever think that I would experience just how, just how solid of a choices we're, we're making as, as people and individuals and society collective. So just I don't know. I, I, like I said, I think you hit it all on the head. So there's, there's not really a lot to add to it. Just blessed. Yeah. I think that that, that would have been, this would have been a definite good episode for Thanksgiving. Cause we should just call this one like gratitude, like gratitude for, for us have gone through so much to know and to share and to educate with each other, to know, like, if anything like this was ever happening to us or against us as, as people that we've got each other's backs, you know, it, it, we're not enemies. We're obviously all in this together. And that's, what's a great thing about where we're at as a, as a society right now, uh, globally, even that we're all one people. And uh, I'm really happy for that. I'm, I hope good things for all everybody, no matter what they believe or what they think. I always hope good things for them. And I know, I know that they also wish the same for me. So gratitude, thankfulness. I'm grateful for just all of us looking out for each other, especially because hard times, when do you need each other more? <laughs> we, uh, we definitely, as, as a people, would step up, like be there for each other. So thankful, man. Thankful. It's a good episode. Thank you, man. Absolutely not. I, uh, I think I'm more thankful that our government is just risen above what, what used to be like how corrupt and how ugly and how disgusting it used to be. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm happy they're better than that. We, we, I, yeah. We really lucked out. So, Hey, nothing but gratitude for everybody. Uh, feel free to uh, make as many comments as you'd like and uh, yeah, share and, and feel free to just be thankful with us. We can't wait to hear how thankful everybody else is about all of these things that are not happening, but us knowing that if they were happening, that we have a good reminder of just what to watch out for in case history was to ever try to repeat itself. So everybody else that's out there, now that you can remember this lesson, uh, it's going to be just like everything. If something came up in front of you that uh, that seems not right, or it seems like maybe we should handle it a little differently, it is just like everything. It's a choice. Good night, everybody. Choice!